All right, guys, we're going to use the axe drill today. It's going to get you some more power in your golf swing, really powerful motion, and a lot more solid strike on the golf ball. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so we got a great drill from Pete Cowan, one of the top coaches in Europe, worked with Henrik Stenson, just a laundry list of tour players. And this is a drill, I think he, he originally uh, came up with this drill, or he may have learned it from someone else, but I really like the feeling of power that you get with this. So if we take this club and turn it up like that, go ahead and make a few swings, don't hit the ground. This is so powerful, you know, if you hit the ground, you could easily just break the shaft off, um, you know, break your club or hit yourself and, and get injured. So don't actually hit the ground when you're doing this, but feel the power of if I was gonna chop down I mean, I could really hit with a lot of speed, a lot of force in the golf swing, or in, in the in axe chopping type motion. Well, the golf swing is just like that. It should feel just as powerful. We're just doing it in a different plane and working the club a little bit differently, but you should have that same sensation in the golf swing that I'm really powerful. I could really use a lot of leverage, or I could use a lot of you know angles to release to, to get a lot of force in there. So I'm gonna walk you through it just step by step. And what we're gonna do now first, let's talk about before we even get into this, what is the point of this video? Because there's gonna be some weird grips, some weird angles, it may get a little bit confusing. The main point of this video is that if I take that overall type powerful motion, I should feel that same type of powerful motion right here, halfway into my downswing. So as I'm starting my downswing, I'm coming into the maximum lag position, I should feel that same power that I feel when I'm doing this over top of my head. Now let's go ahead and get to the details here. So we're gonna set up here take your club upside down and I'm going to take my normal grip. So just like if I was going to chop this over my shoulder and I'm going to go ahead and set up to the golf ball. Now for those of you who struggle coming over the top and casting, this is going to be great for you. We're going to get a little bit exaggerated here and I'm going to go ahead and take this club at a dress and I'm going to turn it sideways. So I'm going to tilt my body, my right arm's tucking under, my hands are a little bit in front. Now this isn't exactly how we'd be hitting the golf ball, but this is just a feeling of getting behind the golf ball. Now from there, I'm just gonna work this club up and on plane. So as I'm coming up, up and um, around my backswing, this is the dress, I'm working up on plane, and now I could feel this tip of the ax kind of working back up that swing plane. And I don't wanna feel like I'm coming you know, out of my posture standing up. I'm just letting my, my arms swing around my body. My body's tilted forward, my arms are just swinging around my body. Now as I start my downswing, this is when I can feel a lot of power. I wanna make sure, as I'm coming down, this ax head stays behind my hands. Now I have tons of lag. At this point of the swing, I feel like I could just swing down and bam, I could just slam this into the back of the ball with tons and tons of power. So I'm letting that work down. Now be sure that your hips are clearing out of the way. I don't wanna do it just all arms like that. I'm gonna go ahead and let my hips clear out of the way just like I would in a golf swing. And the feeling at this point is that I'm gonna come down and hit it with the tip of the ax. Now the only difference is in the golf swing, if we did that, let's take that same thing, well, I'd be coming down and hitting it with a face wide open. So let's flip the club back over again, and I'll show you how to release the golf club. So from here, I'm working that ax tip down, lower and lower in the swing, it feels really powerful. I would be coming in with the tip of the ax, but the difference in golf is that from there, I'm gonna go ahead and cover the golf ball. So what I mean by cover is I'm still keeping the right elbow in, I'm still keeping my shoulder back, I'm not coming over the top. I wanna to feel like my shoulder's connected here. And then as I'm releasing the golf club, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that to where now the back of this face would be into the golf ball. So I'm taking my right palm, if I can imagine, this is with the ax tip forward. I'm taking that right palm open and I'm gonna close it down. We call this the pet the grass drill. I have one of the video on this in our top speed golf system. We're gonna feel like we're taking that hand, turning it down and petting the grass as we're coming through contact and then we're gonna go ahead and let that release after that. You could also feel like you're taking a book and kind of closing the cover of the book. That's gonna square up that face. So I'm going from this ax tip going toward the ball, now I'm gonna cover that golf ball. Again, my shoulder's in, my elbow pit is facing forward. I'm using my forearms to let that club release. And then I can go ahead and swing on through. So do about five or 10 to feel that sensation. Feel the power of this lagging ax head. Feel like you're gonna smash it into the back of the ball. And then from there, we just gotta go ahead and learn to release that face so that now the back of my club would be hitting the golf ball if I was making an actual swing doing this. So the back, that's where we wanna be at impact, back of the club hitting the ball. So let's take that same sensation now and let's hit a few golf shots. I want you to feel very, very powerful in the early transition. And then from there, be sure to release, cover that golf ball. You're gonna get tons of compression 
and you're gonna hit some really nice crisp golf shots. Let's give it a try. There we go, hit that one really solid. I'll definitely be practicing that tip today. Good luck to you guys, see you soon. All right guys, hope y'all really enjoyed this video. If you did, I got an awesome bonus for you. We all want lots of lag in our golf swing. It's so crucial to have tons of lag to be able to get that high club head speed and to be able to drive it past your friends. I'm gonna play a preview from one of my most important golf lag videos. If you're on a desktop device, you can go ahead and click the link that pops up on your screen. If you're on a phone or a tablet, you go ahead and click the iCard and you're gonna get instant access to that video. Plus, you're gonna get instant access to five videos from our top speed golf system. Good luck to you guys. Go out there and rip the ball. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see and in this drill what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, look at Tiger Woods. All these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be.